Hello and welcome to a special edition of NITV News as we honour the life and legacy of Dr Ernestine Benita Marbo. The prominent educator, activist and elder was laid to rest this afternoon following a state funeral held here in Townsville in North Queensland. Around 2,000 people, including many members of Queensland's Aboriginal, Torres Strait Islander and South Sea Islander communities, filled Townsville Stadium to farewell the much-loved matriarch in a powerful but simple ceremony. Let's take a look at how the day played out. Many, she was known as Benetta, but to the family she was known as Noni. This is the letter that I wrote to Noni, and she had asked me to read it today to you. I'm so proud of you. You have shown me the true meaning to be, of being strong. Words cannot explain how special you are, darling. You are the reason I can walk with my chest out and my head held high. You are the reason I feel proud to be a black man in this country. You are the reason why no one will ever take away my culture, my heritage, and who I am as a person. But Noni, my strength and pride is not the best gift that you have given me. You have given me the gift to make others feel proud of who they are and where they come from. For this, I am forever grateful. These are the Forever in my heart and the hearts of us all, love Caleb. The Marbo name is of course synonymous with the fight for Indigenous land rights, with Benita standing strong alongside her husband Eddie Koiki Marbo as he took his fight for native title all the way to the High Court and won. But Benita Marbo was also a passionate advocate and leader in her own right, as Joden Perry reports. The mother of native title, a tireless fighter for the rights of her people. You know, they say forget the path, but we can't. We've got to get out there and let people know we are hurting inside and I'm going to go out and do what I can do for my, my people. Dr Ernestine Benita Marbo was born in Ingham, North Queensland. A proud South Sea Islander with connections to the Mullanbutter clan from Palm Island, her grandfather was blackbirded from Tanner Island, which is now Vanuatu. In 1958, she met Eddie Koiki Marbo in a shanty town on the edge of a Queensland sugar plantation. A year later, they were married. Together, the couple raised 10 children and taught them the importance of knowing their culture. In 1973, she co-founded Australia's first Indigenous community school, the Black Community School in Townsville, where she worked as a teacher's aide and oversaw day-to-day -day operations. Since the 1970s, Dr Marbo campaigned alongside her late husband in pursuit of land rights for Aboriginal people and continued her activism in the years following his death in 1992. Well, I think he'd be proud of me because um, when he was alive, I, w I wouldn't speak out. I was so scared. 
uh, like we go to meetings and he's sitting on the side of me, you know, and, and I, I pretend to do something because I didn't want them to look at me and ask me any questions. And I thought, oh, if I say the wrong thing, well, Eddie's too close. <laughs> but anyway, um, after he died, I think I just got stronger. In 2013, she was named in the Order of Australia for her distinguished service to the Indigenous community and to human rights. I'm sorry, I can't really express the, my feeling today. It's mixed up, uh, happy feeling. Yeah, I only wish Daddy was here. And just before she passed last month, she received one of James Cook University's highest awards, an honorary doctorate of letters in recognition for her outstanding contribution to the community. A fitting final achievement for the matriarch of reconciliation. Well, as we just heard, days before her sad passing last month, Benita Marbo was awarded an honorary doctorate of letters from James Cook University in recognition of her lifelong commitment to social justice. I spoke to the university's chancellor, Bill Tweedle, about that special day and the legacy Dr Marbo leaves behind. We are very, very well aware of the impact she had as the first uh, Indigenous school in Australia. Uh, she started here and I think that ran from 73 to 85 or, or something like that. So, no, we were keen uh, as a university to recognise Auntie Benita in her own right um, as such a contributor to our country. Remember, of course, that, uh, you know, at the time when Eddie was so involved, Eddie as we know him, it was so involved in his campaign, which was ultimately successful just after his death um, uh, in 1992, uh, he was rearing, he and Benita were rearing 10 children as well. So for that very fact alone, uh, to be sharing the burden with, uh, with, uh, with Benita over that, but much more than that. Now I saw some lovely photos from, from the day that you had the, the ceremony for, for Auntie Benita. Tell us, what, what was it like to be there? It was one of the proud days of my life, I have to say, and I'm a privileged person. I spent 40 years uh, working for the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade and as an ambassador abroad and so forth. And um, this is right up there um, to be able to recognise, or well, for her willingness for us to recognise her is the first thing I should say, but to be able to be with her and so many members of the Mabo family on such a special day will, will remain with me forever. It was a very special day for James Cook University and a very, very, very special day for me. Gail, at the end of the ceremony, uh, the wonderful Gail, turned to her mum and said, Mum, you should say a few things. And she very quietly spoke. She was sitting, of course, she spoke to all the young people in a very quiet voice and they hung on her every word to say um, that the fight isn't over you must continue the good work. I don't think she used the word fight, but you must continue the good work. And you could have heard a pin drop. Um, and we're very privileged about that because that may well have been her last public statement, as it were, and we were privileged to be there for it. Deborah Mailman has also paid tribute at the Actor Awards overnight. The actress won a Logie Award in 2013 for her portrayal of Dr Marbo in an ABC TV film. Last night, she stepped aside on the red carpet to acknowledge her wicked humour. She took me in as a daughter, you know, she wrapped her arms around me. She's so kind, she's so thoughtful, but you know, she's got, don't mess with her. Don't mess with her. And that's what I loved about her. It's like she ain't no sort of shrinking wallflower there. Like she had a wicked sense of humour. Um, smart ass. Very kind, beautiful. Like everything an incredible woman is, and she was that. And that's all we have time for tonight. You can read more about the life and legacy of Dr. Benita Marbo on the NITV website. I'm Natalie Armash from all of us here in Townsville. Good night. Thank you.